Hey there YouTube Swoosh fam, what is going on? Welcome to yet another vlog. It is 4 p.m. in Sydney, Australia and today I'm meeting up with Chris A. Walker, a fellow Belgian living in Sydney who's running a YouTube channel. Now to make this a bit more valuable than just meeting a random person on the internet, I am going to be shooting some photos with a really cheap $20 ND filter from eBay, a more expensive 10-stop uh, format high-tech circular uh, ND filter, and then I'm going to use my more expensive uh, format high-tech um, square filter slide-in slot thingy. Um, and we're going to take the same photos and then we're going to compare them uh, later on to see uh, if you should be getting uh, cheap or more expensive gear, pretty much. Uh, we're going to be shooting at Milson's Point, as you probably would have seen from the thumbnail. And yeah, I'm going to pack my gear. I'm also bringing a 5D SR with a 1740 uh, to shoot some time-lapse stuff and a 40mm 2.8 lens to shoot a hyperlapse from the bridge. So fingers crossed it doesn't rain and this all goes well. Let's uh, go to Milson's Point. Made it to Milson's Point and I creeped up on a fellow Belgian. Yes. Chris Air Walker. Oh, I love beer. Oh, <laughs> I also love beer. I forgot Four more left. days. We had an agreement. Oh, I forgot. I'm not drinking this month. Four more days. Oh, right. uh, let's walk down and then I'll get, um, get him to introduce himself properly. Um, it's looking so great. So yeah. I don't know what's going to happen, so but exciting. we'll figure something out. Look what we have here. <laughs> no! A wild Rob Mavelli. Hey mate, how are you? You found me. Things. I'm pretty good. You good? Can we go and shoot now, please? Okay. <laughs> Instruct these guys to walk for the vlog and they're just being fucking idiots. <laughs> we have arrived, we're about to set up, but first I told you I'm going to introduce Chris. So Chris, here you go. Who are you and what do you do? Hey, I'm Chris. I'm an Olympus visionary and I shoot outdoor adventure travel stuff and I'm mostly traveling basically and shooting stuff and um, love YouTube as well. Recently discovered thanks to my fellow Belgian Matt and uh, Matt Joes. Check him out. Awesome channel. <laughs> You're watching his video right now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm on YouTube too now. So I do like adventure photography on location stuff where I go onto locations and shoot stuff. And it's actually prime. Chris's channel is mind blowingly, uh, would you call it fertile? Like his subscriber base is just blowing up um, I think everyone that's seeing that is quite jealous because uh, um, you know it's yeah it's just insane growth but that growth is well deserved because there's actual real value in there and it's inspired me to educate you guys or to share some more knowledge so there's more value in these clips for all y'all and uh, yeah highly recommend checking him checking him out the link is in the description down below as always Thank you. we um, also have Rob Mullally but he's not um, worth talking about he's Mostly on the vlogs, in the background, doing weird shit, and that's what's <laughs> happening. But look at that. Matt's look all about efficiency and redundancy, and something happens to Amelia. Back off. But yeah, Rob's YouTube channel is also in the description down below. All right, this is the goal of the video. That's the cheap filter, more expensive one, even more expensive one. Let's set up uh, on my little tripod, and let's shoot some photographs of this view, pretty much. Here's the setup that we'll be using. That's a 5DSR with a 2470. This is the cheap filter. Now, before we do this, I'm going to take it back to basics and explain you what this actually is. An ND filter, or also known as a neutral density filter, is pretty much a pair of sunnies for your lens and your camera. So this is a dark piece of glass and it um, stops the light from coming in, so you need to expose for longer, so you actually get enough light uh, on the sensor to create your photo. Now, this can be made cheaply, like this one, or more expensive, and the differences are going to be obviously the optical quality of the glass, and this will impact uh, refracting, uh, aberration, sharpness, um, even contrast and, and you know stuff like light leaks come to play and stuff as well. So let's have a look at the differences. First up is the cheap $20 eBay one, the Ice ND 1000. So these guys, they just kind of screw on, which can be quite annoying. Now, what does 10 stop mean? It means that it lets in uh, 10 stops of light uh, less, or it's 10 stops darker than what you usually have with no filter. Now to calculate your exposure, you 
you can try it out or you uh, take a photo without the filter and take one with the filter. If your exposure without a filter is one second, then increasing the exposure by one stop means you go to two seconds, second stop means you go to four seconds, then you go to eight, sixteen, thirty-two. So use that as a guideline to work with your uh, ND filter pretty much. Uh, I'm sure there's apps or you can Google uh, that exactly or do some prep work beforehand uh, which will pay off when you're at in the field shooting. Hey fellas? <laughs> Just shoot and try, keep trying. Just shoot and try, that's Rob's. If it's too dark, make it longer. and pray. So I'm on this tripod. I've put on the two second shutter delay. So when I click, it counts down two seconds and then it shoots the photo. I'm going to shoot the photo without the filter. I'm going to check the filter on and um, do all the other ones. And we'll see how they hold up. So this is the first photo that I shot again because I forgot to put it at F8. 1 50th of a second with the 10 stop ND filter goes to 20 seconds. And um, I'm now going to try the other filters and then we'll have a look at some post processing. This is the Format High Tech Firecrest Circular ND yeah. filter. Keep in mind when shooting on a tripod to turn off your stabilizer because if it's on, the internal mechanism will look for motion and that'll uh, result in a blurry photo. Second photo done uh, with the Firecrest Format High Tech. Now, what I notice immediately is the vignetting is not apparent at the higher price point. Let's try out the most expensive setup, which are these square filters. They come with this holder, this screws on to the lens. You slide your filters in there and then you put that on the lens. Um, but yeah, it's a bit more of a setup, that's why I have these, because they're so easy and so quick and still high quality. Mount this filter. Mount. It's gotta be tricky to not ruin the thread on the lens, so you gotta be like quite careful. But I think I've got it now, and then you slide on that thing, like so. Let me just show you that mounting point. That's a little screw thingy, and that's locked in, and then you slide your filter in. Here we come to the main benefit of the square uh, filter holder system. As you can see, this is just the uh, black ND filter. But this, as you can see, has a gradual increase or decrease in brightness and that's what you call a grad ND and that's good for darkening just the sky and not uh, for example water or your foreground. Let's slide this bad boy in there and try not to drop anything or scratch it. All right mission accomplished. I'm um, gonna set that up now and take a photo with it. And it's running another 20 second exposure with a two second delay. Look at that scene. And now I'm going to show you uh, this little grad in the, show you what that looks like. Maybe I can show you on the screen. It's going to be hella overexposed. Not sure if it's too visible when you slide that in and out. Kind of. So yeah, grad and these are mainly used uh, in challenging lighting conditions for landscape photography. Um, now that we've gone over how to shoot with them, uh, I'll show you the post-processing later, but something that you should keep in mind, different price points, different brands and different qualities, they all have different um, types of effects on the uh, images. The ideal filter is, as I mentioned before, optically just perfect and has no color cast. Now what's a color cast? I've noticed while using my format high tech ones that there is a bit of a blue uh, color cast, a bit of an extra blue color in the, the uh, shot, which is obviously not ideal. Now, Chris has got a new set of Lee filters, which is a, a big classic name in history, and apparently they have no color cast, so let's try that out. This is Chris's uh, f-stop backpack, what's the model? Ajna. Ajna, cool. And you got hooked up with some... Uh, some good old Lee filters. Oh, nice. Some new toys to so got some gradual ones. Let's some... grab a 10-stop if you have one. Yeah, let me just check. Take time. There you go, 10 stop. <laughs> Perfect, all right, let's go give that um, give that a go, I guess. And here's the shot. Now, from what I can tell, a bit of a vignette, but maybe that's just the light that's changed, I'm not sure. And also a bit of a color cast, apparently. Now that I've got all my shots, let's swoosh back to my studio and do some editing. All right, so here we are in Lightroom. These are the five images. The first image, quite clearly, is the uh, normal uh, exposure, sort of like the reference point for sharpness, 1 50th of a second at f8. Let's zoom in times 2. Uh, that's pretty acceptable. There's a bit of noise, but this is just the raw file, untreated pretty much. 
uh, the benefit of shooting with the 50 megapixel photos or the 5DSR is that any flaws that you have will become more apparent when you zoom in and you see more. So what we have straight away with no filter, you see on the side here is a bit of chromatic aberration where the colors get separated due to how the light enters and refracts in the lens. Let's go to the first image. This is on the cheap filter. The first thing I've noticed is a bit of vignetting. Now that can be kind of dealt with, but ideally you don't want any of that vignetting. Let's zoom in and have a look at the sharpness. Now, from what I can tell, this is pretty acceptable. Maybe it looks a tiny bit fuzzy, um, but the sharpness is still there. And again, it's unedited, so you can um, add some sharpness to that. Um, that aberration seems about the same, maybe slightly worse. Let's move on to the next photo. So this is the more expensive circular ND filter. And the color cast here, as you can see, cheap filter, more expensive filter. It's a bit cooler, maybe a bit purplish on the side. That's also a bit of light just moving in. Um, but obviously no vignetting um, or less vignetting. That's pretty good. Sharpness, pretty good. And that aberration on the side is still there. Now, for me, that's a clear difference between the cheap one and the more expensive one. This is a way more balanced um, vignette and uh, yeah, looks looks just a bit better. Let's move on to the square filter here. Looks more like a greenish color cast, no vignetting. Um, sharpness about the same, I'd say, as the circular one. I'm not a scientist, I'm not an expert, aberration still there. But yeah, just from what I can tell, like this looks pretty good. Now let's move on to the leaf filter. Here we go. Um, yeah, maybe a bit blue greenish uh, it's definitely slightly there but as you would expect pretty good sharpness and aberrations there obviously because it's an effect from it in the lens I'd say this is quite a um, you know quite a good performing kit and that's it for the leaf filter pretty much now let's go back to Milton's point Shaboom, we made it back to Milson's Point um, to finish this vlog, I guess. But we'll do some more shooting and we'll go to dinner later as well. Now the conclusion of the ND filters, obviously, the higher you go in price, the better the quality, but the cheaper ones are also pretty good if you just want to have a play with it, like a $20 price point versus, you know, maybe a couple hundred for a set. If you want to figure out if long exposures is something for you, give that $20 one a go. I'll see if I can find which exact model I have. Uh, on eBay and check it in uh, the description down below. Hard work is now done. Let's go and sh -sh shoot and sh -sh show some cinematics. One, two, three. of the lens and it's quite annoying sometimes because it's such a fine thread but I think I've nooked on that yep no and I'm ruining my lens <laughs> 